It is with great pleasure that I welcome Robbie Sefton to, the, to facilitate our panel session today. Robbie is a local and another industry asset that we can all be really proud to know. As a business leader, mentor and farmer, Robbie's clear vision is for rural and regional Australia to be a vibrant, prosperous and dynamic place for people to create and work, re work in rewarding careers. Robbie, with her husband Alastair Yenkin, is a wool, meat and grain farmer and also managing director of Seftons, a national rural, regional and agribusiness strategic communications company based here in Tamworth. An exceptionally passionate advocate for the bush whose commitment to our industry is second to none. We are really privileged to have her here with us today for our panel session, so please join me in welcoming Robbie Sefton. Thanks so much, Jane, and it's fantastic to be here in my own hometown, which is great. And welcome to Tamworth, everyone. And I'd just like to acknowledge MLA and the Integrity Systems Company in coming to Tamworth and, um, and joining us in our dry, hot, smoky environment. So um, it's been a pretty tough um, couple of years that we've had here, and so it's really nice to be able to talk to some uh, red meat producers and people from around Australia who are having a little bit better season than we are. So we've been feeding our livestock, which is, um, we've had 11,000 sheep now down to 6,000 and um, 1,000 breeding cattle down to 700. We've been doing that since February last year. And um, so it's now business as usual, which is um, feeding livestock every day. So, and, you know, listening so, to some of the speakers before and we've um, taken some, some learnings from them, we've got a 15-year cropping and grazing plan and um, that's been shifted a little bit just lately. So our crops have just failed a, a month or so ago, and, um, but we're keeping close to our bank and keeping close to our advisors. So we've got a really good farm consultant and we've got excellent agronomists and we've got an exceptionally good team on our farm. So if there's one thing I would like to say is that it's important to make sure that you've got really great people around you in times of need. And I'd just like to acknowledge everyone else that's um, finding it challenging at the moment, particularly those in the bushfires. It's been bloody tough. And uh, so I have a lot of empathy for you. And uh, so it's really nice to have you all here and to actually hear the stories of other producers and industry leaders sharing their knowledge and skills with the rest of us. It's fantastic. So thank you all for being here. And I just want to say we've got an excellent session with an extraordinary panel that's coming up. So let me introduce you to them. There's seven of them in total, and um, they come from all facets and all geographics throughout Australia. We see Integrity Systems as being an important link between producers and consumers and our end users. It provides a link from on-farm information through to the actual provenance of product wherever it's sold throughout the world. I think it's really important to be up to date with what industry needs, what our consumers are telling us, and so we need to meet those requirements. Well, it underpins everything that we do. We've got to remember that no matter where we are in Australia, we're producing food, and Integrity Systems is the documentation that underpins the food safety. The ability to capture records electronically and store those records provides some real advantages. Whether you're audited, whether you're demonstrating to customers, the ability to do that through that data is going to be a driving force going forward. Our vision is to broaden our end-to-end -end supply chain, taking Australian produced and processed red meat, distributing to our global markets direct to consumer. What's really important to us is that we produce a top quality beef product by providing care for our animals, the people that work for us and the environment we work in. We have a real focus on innovation and technology. We want to be able to give our clients and their producers the best feedback possible so they can make better decisions within their business and on farm. Our markets are increasingly asking for traceability systems, for provenance stories, how is the beef produced? Where is it produced? To make sure that customers who want to know more about where their food comes from and want to have more information and be assured that they're purchasing a quality product to ensure that we deliver that day in, day out. So whether that's part of NLIS or LPA or the NVD system, 
it's the system that underpins everything. We've led the way in that throughout the world and for us to continue to be leaders in this area, we just need to continue to make sure that we're meeting what our consumer wants because we are supplying food. In the event of a disease incursion or a food safety incident, we can quickly access those records and make better decision-making processes about defending Queensland from economic pests and diseases or food safety scares. NLIS, ENVDs, LPA, those three systems underpin our market access, both domestic and our export markets, so they're vital not just to keep access to our current markets, but for access to new markets. The entire value behind our brand and the provenance of those brands has to be supported by security and traceability that's underpinned by an industry and government backed system. So at GMP we're implementing Livestock Data Link and this is a platform that we can use for both our clients and their producers to ensure that they can analyse feedback that's coming out of our processing plant and be able to drive value out of that feedback, making changes within their business or on their farm to ensure that they're gaining value. We see integrity systems being an integral part of our business to ensure the flow of information from producers through to consumers and whether those consumers are in Asia, America or wherever they may be over the world. Data and tech for a business like that, ours is absolutely critical. We're a grain of sand on the beach compared to the big processes and we need to be nimble and efficient and use data to our benefit to be able to survive in the current environment. Information flow as we move forward is going to be more and more important to our business to be able to give quality feedback through to producers to help them improve their business. In 2024, I would hope that anyone that was going to a sale yard would be able to scan a pen of sheep, for example, and get all of their animal health data, what they've been fed, what they've been injected with, what their animal health issues, simply that's an everyday occurrence. Currently our customers have an immediate demand for improved data and security around our integrity systems. And I think within the next 10 years, they're expecting something far more robust, but I think we're moving with the times. Real-time transfer of data through the integrity systems will be the most important thing in the future for the red meat industry. So Lockie, let's start with you, and as a, as a beef and land brand over from um, Geelong, which is, is down near Harden in New South Wales, and you're delivering a really complete meat product direct to your customers, and I believe that you've now got a strategic alliance starting with China, which is just fantastic. I'm really interested in this paddock to plate um, aspect and how you ensure the integrity um, and, and the protection of your brand. So what is it that you're doing and how you're managing that from an integrated aspect? Uh, thanks, Robbie. Uh, I guess from our point of view, being um, an end-to-end oh, end supply chain and a brand owner, the, the data, the quality of that data, how you capture that data, and hence the integrity of it, is, is key for a, a brand like us. That's our entire value around the provenance and the supply chain, and that's, that's what we're selling. So in essence, that's all a brand is worth. Yeah. It really is is it exactly what you're putting in the packet? And that has always been our biggest focus. I guess from our point of view, we, we do, you know, we're, we're producers, so we're breeders, we are fatteners, we trade a lot of livestock, we then process them, we then further process them, and we export and distribute. So we do the full supply chain. And for the last 18 months, we've been work, working very closely with the MLA, and particularly over the, over the coming years, to try and take all that data, integrate it, and then actually streamline that process to improve the actual quality of the data. And uh, we are about to embark on quite a big project to try and put an overarching uh, platform above that with a blockchain uh, security to really say, there's the NLS system integrated, here's our livestock production system, which is integrated, here's our processing, which is integrated, and then all like, our sales orders and our shipping documents and everything's in one, one place okay. where you can actually say, that product is end-to-end -end supply chain yep. uh, secured. And a lot of it initially was driven by our, our customers in China yep. uh, initially. And they're consumers that want to pay for the data which is a little bit different in the Australian um, sort of retail space and producer space because everyone has an inherent trust for what they're eating, but up there people will pay for the data. Data costs, you know, that, that, that platform will cost, but given 
the inherent increase in value in beef and, uh, and what lamb are worth, I think um, it's more than justified to really put some investment in that because I think going forward that's where the returns will come from. Fantastic. And I think that um, you, certainly as a panellist here, with a fully integrated system, right from paddock to plate, is really critical. So Jane, I'm really interested in your world as a mixed um, livestock producer and from South Australia. And I'm just interested about the productivity benefits that tools like Livestock Data Link provide you and your business. And what do you think about your livestock operation that you, that you have and, and the, ones that, um, the systems that you don't have? What would make a significant difference to your business? How can we move forward for you? Um, I think, well, LDL, we use it as a, as a tool. It's a, really a monitoring tool. So um, if there's an animal health issue, um, making sure that we're hitting our targets is really essential um, for us. So to have that data, we're only a small producer, so um, every, every cent counts. Um, and I think the other thing that I think is essential um, needs to happen is within the land production side of things. We need to be able to hook track EID and get individual information back um, to the producers. So, um, for example, we, we will buy lambs in. I want to know that the lambs that I'm buying in uh, are adding value to my business. Um, and I don't know that I, unless, you know, um, unless I'm setting an individual lot that's just from the, that person I purchase, that's usually not how it happens. They, mm -hmm. they go and wait. And um, so it's really essential that I can, I can see that individual data because if I'm getting animals that aren't meeting the criteria, then I don't want to purchase them. <laughs> And you certainly don't want to feed them. No, That's exactly. Right. Like, as in, they need to be counting. Like yeah, every, absolutely. Every, every hectare, cent every beast, yeah. every lamb absolutely. needs to count, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also interested about young people. You've, when I heard you speak this morning, you were talking about your multi-generational family mm -hmm. farming business. I would have thought that for young people that um, being able to access data and being able to, to, to actually be connected and be able to look at the, you know, manage the data is important. Is that something that you're finding your kids are interested in and their absolutely. peers too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our eldest son is a mechanical engineer and he's back on farm. Yep. So everything has to have a reason and a scientific background and, um, you know, he wants as much data as he can get. So we measure everything. Um, and uh, I often manage that data because he's also, you know, working, doing hard labour. And... Um, he does scoff at me at times that I don't have the technical skills to perhaps manage some of that. <laughs> so he's taught me a lot. That's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> but I think that's the other thing that makes agriculture so sexy these days is it is really data driven and you can really um, manipulate the figures and the, and the information so that you can actually make the best management decisions and certainly the right strategic decisions. And I'd probably say it's one of the reasons we've gone down the technology line that we have, Robbie, is yeah. because we want to make sure that the next generation want to be there. Yeah. So we need to make sure that they're, it's interesting for them to be there. Absolutely, meaningful, purposeful yeah. and yeah. profitable. Yeah, so absolutely. fantastic. Thanks, Jane. So I'm interested, um, Tess, from, um, from your point of view, um, from a feedlot operator's perspective, how does the current integrity system help you better meet the requirements of your customers? And what is the role, and what role does the future system need to play in underpinning and promoting red meat sustainability. So that's sort of wearing your leadership hat there, as well as you know you being involved in as the chair of the Lot Feeders Association, you as a feed lotter yourself, and then the chair of the sustainability framework. So um, look, the the in, the three pillars of the integrity systems that Jane and Joe went through, NVDs, NLAs, and LPA, absolutely are embedded in our business, and not just for compliance purposes. It's not just a tick box exercise because we have to do it. Um, their management tools, Jane used the word tool as well, their management tools that add value. Every day we are checking NVDs, we're writing out NVDs or using the, we use electronic NVDs. Um, we're um, uh, on the database, um, we're accredited with LPA, we've done the re-accreditation process. So it's not just embedded and compliant, but it needs to be taken that little step further and, and and to be honest, at a feedlot level, we do that. So um, they're, they're our very, our, to be on, their entry level requirements. Um, our feedlot software, for example, uh, we don't use LDL because our software allows us to import carcass data directly into the software based on the RFID um, as the data point. 
so that we can get a full lifetime report on those cattle and how they've performed um, from the moment they enter the feedlot to, to the carcass point. Okay. Um, that data drives the business, as Jane pointed out. It's, 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 it drives what we do every day, but it also drives our, our strategic decision making as well. Um, Jane and Joe both talked about 20 years since NLIS. Um, 20 years ago, a very, very young Joe Quigley visited Gundermain Feedlot and um, we had a producer demonstration day for NLIS, this new shiny thing that no one was quite sure how this would work. And to me it was exciting, um, but oh, right throughout Australia it's now embedded in our businesses, in cattle businesses. We all acknowledge that we have to electronically tag everything. So to me the success story for the integrity systems is how embedded we, that those behaviours have become in each of our businesses. Um, I do see opportunity for LPA in particular, um, for, for reinventing NLIS NVDs. I know ENVDs are coming, look forward to that. LPA in particular, I see the real potential to do something and I'll pop my sustainability hat on quickly here because increasingly, um, and Jane, I think you used the word verified story as a phrase, the whole concept, we're constantly being told, tell your story. Story will fall apart very quickly if you don't have your underlying credentials. LPA to me is that process. So I think we need to continue to work on LPA. We've got our new animal welfare and biosecurity modules and that's where I see the mm. most opportunity. Mm. Excellent. And so I'm um, really hearing that it's, you know, it's work in progress every day from you know, where we were 20 years to where we are now. And is it's making sure that those consumers feel safe and comfortable and secure with um, what they're eating and um, gives us the trade opportunity and that cutting edge across the globe. So thanks, Tess. It's a, a really relevant point. But I, <coughs> you mentioned Joe and Jane a minute ago. So, Joe, I'm just going to jump to you. And, and one of the areas that you touched on in your presentation was around tags and, and retention of tags. So it's a real issue in the cattle industry, and so I'm just interested about what ICS is, is doing, excuse me, ICSC is doing about the next-gen cattle identification and where we're up to with that. Yeah, so it is, it's an important, um, I guess, component of our traceability system. We need to ensure that we have mechanisms that allow us to have whole-of-life traceability. Um, we have standards in place that uh, tags must go, go through and be assessed against in order of, um, I guess, assuming that, that they're meeting those standards and that we're able to demonstrate that they can remain attached to the animal um, for, a, for a good period of time to support those whole-of-life traceability objectives. Um, but we do recognise that certainly in, in particular areas within Australia, as animals get older, uh, some, of the, some of the tags um, are falling out. Um, it's, it's not a consistent issue and it's, it's one that we've been researching for, for quite a period of time. Um, I think that the tag is, is obviously something that everyone is familiar with. Mm -hmm. It's easy to use and it's easy to, to manage through the supply chain. Um, but as I touched on through, through my presentation, I think there is um, real opportunity for us to look at how we, we do our traceability system and whether technology can allow us to, to achieve traceability in different ways. Um, so we've certainly been doing work in trying to um, work collaboratively with tag manufacturers to look at um, improvements to the, to the current tagging system. But we're also looking at um, R&D into new identification technologies. Um, to, to see whether we can actually achieve um, a, a system of identification that really gives us that solid guarantee around um, whole of life traceability and, and starting to look at ways in which we can potentially link that right through the value chain, right mm. through to the point of consumer. So what can we do from farm to the point of processing and then beyond to give our, our customers um, that end-to-end -end confidence as to the origin of the, of the product? That's good. Thank you. It's good to hear. And I, I guess, um, just jumping to you now, Bomber, from a government perspective, what do you see as the priorities for, the red, for red meat integrity and particularly traceability over the next 20 years? Thanks. I suppose what I've heard to date from the panellists that before me has been about their individual situation, I suppose, from a government point of view. I've been heavily involved with trade delegations, international trading partner audits, EU audits, etc. 
And, and I suppose the thing that I'd like to highlight is the system's performance and that data availability. I mean, uh, NLIS, we, we, we led the way in that. Um, it, you know, it was a, a fantastic opportunity. You know, you could really show these international visitors what traceability we've got and whatnot. But they, they as you heard, and Joe and, and uh, Jane talked about it before, some of these guys in, in other countries are catching up to us. Mm -hmm. So some of that priority we need to do is, is about making better use of that data. Um, you know, from a tracing point of view and being heavily involved in, in a, a number of national tracing exercises. The ability to, you know, the ENVD is, a, is an exciting project from our point of view. Um, you know, from a tracing exercise point of view, we would um, see the transfer in the database, we would make a phone contact with the producer that received the cattle and then he might answer the phone. Or we'd have to wait for him to, to come back to us. But by able to access electronic records in the database, we can then verify that movement against the paperwork, mm. the electronic paperwork, and proceed to, to do what we need to do, whether it's a food safety incident yeah. or a disease incursion. So yeah. that's, that's a really powerful tool in Queensland and, and um, other jurisdictions will follow, but we've already changed our legislative framework to support the ENVD. Um, you know, we don't want to burden truck drivers, transport operators to actually carry the document, you know, so that part of it as well. So we're just asking those guys to carry the unique serial number if ever intercepted or, some, uh, or that sort of was stopped. So we're really excited about the enhancements that'll give us from a government point of view about um, verifying, monitoring mm -hmm. and, and those sorts of aspects that we do. Some of the other aspects is, you know, in the next 10 years, we, we, we'll be sort of looking at our legislative frameworks, which supports the integrity systems. I mean, overarching, we, we support NLIS. Um, through that legislative framework and each jurisdiction is responsible for that. So we'll, we'll continually look at that, the adoption of new technologies, what happens there, we'll, we'll make sure that they're covered off in legislation so that we can, we can go forward with those aspects as well. And the other thing I suppose that, I, that I'm thinking for is a co-approach to monitoring and compliance. You know, um, just not a, a jurisdiction sitting there but also some industry ownership around that monitoring and compliance components. Um, you know, as a dual approach, we can demonstrate again to trading partners, um, international auditors, that the system that we've got is dual owned, government and industry, and, and that ownership's a very strong um, way that we can demonstrate our commitment to that. Yeah. And I think that um, we're best placed in Australia to do that because we're quite connected to our industry groups, and many of us um, are operating mixed enterprises on our farms, and so sheep and cattle like ourselves and, um, and have, have got that connectivity and um, particularly with our stock and station agents which um, takes us straight through to you um, Paul. Um, so I'm, I'm interested Paul in um, the system t today's integrity system and of uh, delivering to stock and station agents and what does the future red meat integrity system need to do to ensure increased adoption and compliance yeah, and I guess so and how can stockies be part of that and um, part of our solution there. Yeah, so I mean simply it's the documentation we use to, to stand uh, behind what we sell on a day-to-day -day basis in sale yards all over uh, you know, Australia. Um, sale yards and agency provide um, everyone the opportunity to be a part of the value chain, whether you've got you know, three cattle, as we do in and around Toowoomba, or whether you're part of you know, a large corporate where we transact livestock for them as well. You know, they could have 300,000 there. So, uh, it's, it, it's that documentation that, that we use to, to do that. Um, where we go forward is, is agencies always said that we're here to add value to the system and um, some would dispute that somewhat. But, um, you know, that value that we, when we go forward could be changing. It could be the communications. We could be the link from, from integrity systems through to the producers on the ground, uh, you know, We've got 100,000 plus customers. We can get to them, mm, you know, quickly. in a moment's notice. So that value uh, could be around the increased adoption of, of technologies um, and, and communication. You know, very simply, you can train one livestock agent about LDL or, you know, the entire sub, uh, integrity system, and, and that that um, that agent can then take that message out. Uh, and, and, and in a positive fashion, um, I know Jason has spoken about that on a couple of occasions, that you know, it's nice to have good positive mes uh, messages out there. So with a good positive message about 
you know, the, the partners that we've got in the processing industry and how that can all link together. So that's where value may be in the future with agency. It's just yeah. uh, might look a little bit different to what it does today. Yeah. And I think that one of the important things with, um, with agencies and, and agents is trust. And they have got deep levels of trust with their clients and clients trust them implicitly, plus the network, as you said, and the connectivity. So um, really important part of the chain and, um, and particularly from that communication aspect. So thanks, Paul. From Dubbo to the top of NT, of course, <laughs> in your catch. Um, so Michelle, as a processor and um, someone that's really um, communicating um, the, the really important aspects of what you're doing, at um, Gundagai Meats, how do you satisfy your customer that the product that you're processing meets their needs in terms of safety, traceability, welfare and quality? Yeah, great question, Ruby, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, so it's really using the integrity systems, company services that we use every day. So these are things like NLIS for traceability and NVDs. So these are really important parts of what we do every day and they really underpin what we do. Um, what I'm really excited about is how we can actually use the integrity systems company services such as Livestock Data Link into the future. So as a um, processor, we actually believe that all of the information that we collect, so in terms of disease and defect and carcass information, belongs back with the producer. That's the only place that we're going to see um, some of the animal health issues that come through being solved if we actually give that feedback back to those producers and to our clients. So that's really integral for us. Um, we're also in, um, coming up to the end of the installation of the first hot DEXA within Australia, which is really exciting. Um, that's a new piece of technology that's going to tell us the composition of each carcass that comes through our plant. So that's how much meat, fat and bone. Um, and we'll be using Livestock Data Link once again as a service um, through Integrity Systems Company to communicate that information back to producers. So, yeah, Integrity Systems Company really excites me. There's lots of really great things that uh, are really happening and coming up in terms Excellent. of technology and communication of that information. Yeah, and it sounds like that transfer between um, in the supply chain is really important and critical and certainly back to producers, it, it really makes sense so that they can communicate with you through that system too. Yeah, so definitely. Really powerful. So with that in mind, um, I'm just going to throw to you, Jane. Um, Jane Weatherly, CEO of Integrated um, Integrity Systems Company. Um, Jane, I understand that... Um, about the new, the eNVD, so the electronic NVD. It's essentially just an online version of the NVD. The new version um, is being tested. So t tell us where it's up to. So I think the eNVD is certainly a, a complex little beast. It's one that um, was basically a, a vision of the Safe Meat Initiatives Review in 2015. So it's been thought of for a long time. Um, I guess the advantage of going digital is, is probably a logical next step for, for the documentation within our integrity systems programs. And I guess the, the advantage of that is, is the, the better or more accurate data that we can receive um, through an electronic system, um, the ability for us to actually um, utilise that data, store it and retrieve it if we need to. Um, and also eating cost savings that um, I guess come with saving um, with a lot less paperwork that's required. So um, there's lots of potential for, for the EMVD. Um, we released the first version of the, the EMVD in about August 2017. So that was sort of our baseline starting point and have used the time since then to pretty much receive as much feedback as we can on how we need to really tweak and improve the system that, that's now been initiated. So with that, we've um, been testing a new version um, over the last month or so with about 100 or so producers and feedlotters, um, which is, um, I guess, a, a much, much more um, user-friendly version. So the interface, when you um, actually land on it, is a lot more user-friendly. Um, it also has um, the templates ability, so you can create templates. You don't have to repopulate or do new ones every time. You can create the own, the, your own unique templates. Um, we've also, um, you'll have all your consignments in one place. You'll also have all of the, um, the uh, animal health statements, etc., in one place as well. So again, you can have those as templates and not have to pre-populate them every time. 
Um, it's, it'll be mobile friendly as well, so that's a handy thing. And, and one of the biggest sticking points for, for the EMVD is um, connectivity. So over the next 12 months, we'll be able to have a functionality, um, a functionality built into the system where you can have an offline version that works once you, be, once you come back into um, an area for, with uh, phone Excellent. reception. So That's good. So it's an exciting time with EMVD. Um, it, it is one of those things that evolves, and the more feedback we get that we can respond to, the better we'll, we'll be able to get the system. Excellent, Jane. Because I think that being able to transport it quickly from paddock you know, into the truck to wherever it needs to go is really important. As we know, big brown land of ours, wide open spaces, connectivity from a telecommunications point is not always there. So it's great to be having it at that aspect. So thanks for that. So Stephen, as a livestock processor and a feedlotter um, and also a brand owner um, of, of a really important um, group of businesses, what do you think consumers of your product will be demanding in, say, five years from now? And do you think the red meat integrity system is ready to respond to that? Thanks, Robbie. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. And I'd just like to say to everybody that's here, you are part of a wonderful industry. The red meat industry is one of the, the best industries in Australia. It provides a lot of income to local areas. It provides a lot of employment for local people. And I think we probably haven't had much chance to celebrate success over the last couple of years, but I think we're probably on the uh, cusp, hopefully, of something that's a lot better than what we've seen. Integrity Systems provides our business with a platform to be able to drive value back into supply chains and also increase revenue, which can be delivered back to producers. I think that uh, our business in particular, we're seeing a lot of very, very smart young people start to come into agriculture. And this, these programs at Integrity Systems really excite these people. And some of the information that we can drive out of su things such as LDL is really going to set up our business going forward, which will also drive money back into uh, producers' pockets. So going forward, I think you are part of something that is, is really wonderful. Integrity Systems is respected around the world for the information, the provenance stories we can sell, the, uh, the raising claims we make on products is really, is, ex is accepted around the world as to be truthful. And we can stand behind the product that we pack and know that it is 100% what we say it's going to be. So I do commend you on all, all for coming today and you are really, we're on the cusp of something that's exciting if we can just get the weather and a few things to go with us. Yeah, that's, yeah exactly. And I think that you know, one thing we're really learning and learnt in agriculture is consumers are king and they're shaping the destiny of our agricultural systems, be that food or fibre. And it's really important that we listen carefully to them as you do and, and Lockie and, and, and everyone on our panel and all of you in the audience. So I guess one last question I'd like to ask each of the panel members, and a nice short one would be great, is um, <laughs> what do you believe um, is the key learning that you'd like to share around the integrity systems that you work with that is beneficial for, for us here today, or certainly beneficial to your business or industry or organisation. So Lockie? I'll, I'll kick off. I think uh, probably Joe's presentation summed that up. I think where we're going, I think um, that is going to shape the future. And I think everything in that presentation is where we all need to get behind. In, in a brief summary for myself and, uh, and the ladies touched on it, the operational benefits, like the data is actually your friend and using it is going to change the way you operate your business. And we have to, um, for us, we have to uh, really use it to our advantage. And we've sort of, you sort of go on one project and then you realise when you link it together that you set out to have a buy animal p and and all of a sudden we've got all of our traceability and our links and then we've got our ADG and performance and we would also have two years of MSA data which is backed into all of our genetics and you're on one tangent but you realise you actually just benefited about six different parts of your yeah, business. Yeah. So uh, I'd, yeah, I'd embrace it and make it your friend and if you look at where we're going to be, we have to get there and the industry as a whole is going to be the ones that drive that um, with, with the vision and the support of the um, Integrity Systems Company. Yeah, great. Thank you. I hope that was short enough. That's short enough. <laughs> That's great. And I'll get you to sing in a moment, Lockie. Uh, Jane, your, I'll, your I'll thoughts. I'll be shorter. Um, I think, like Lockie said, the opportunity that, that Joe has spoken about, I think that I don't think they're an opportunity. I think that has to happen. Um, and I think the um, other thing I would say is for producers to embrace that data exactly as Lockie has said. So the opportunities there, sign up for LDL, 
um, you know, if, if your processor isn't using it, encourage them to use it because we need those processors um, using that, that, that whole um, integrity systems with the LDLs. So mm. I think that's really important. Thanks, Jane. Tess, is this working? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> Good to go. Um, um, look, I often, for, with the Beef Sustainability Framework hat on firmly here, we often talk, and apologies to the sheep guys, but we often talk <laughs> about brand beef Australia is what we're talking about here with a lot of the work that we're doing. So I, I think we need to, I think Lockie used the word embrace. You both mm. used the word embrace. Um, these expectations aren't going to be lowered. No. Um, our consumers' expectations will increase over time. Um, in, in an effort to um, address them and meet them, if we can, we need to be really thinking strategically and be ahead of the game. Mm. Um, if we're not working as an industry on our systems, and our integrity systems in particular, someone else will do it for you. And Lockie, you use the word industry driven. This needs to be industry driven, industry owned, industry adopted, and um, industry embraced. I'll use that word one more time. So for us to really drive um, our market access in particular, but also in, a, in order to be able to answer all the questions that our consumers, and really importantly, our customers, are asking about what we do. Um, how have you produced this beef? Where has it come from? Um, how did you treat that animal during its lifetime? If we have the verification processes underpinning all of that, we'll be in a much more comfortable spot. Um, when we get to answer those questions that Sam Burke talked about later about alternative proteins and whatever else might be coming at us in the future, we're doing all of that hard work now. Sorry, probably too long, Robbie. But important. Thanks, Tess. No, it's really good messaging. Thank you. Bomber. Robbie, my message is pretty simple. I suppose the day, if it ever happens that we have a major disease incursion, this will be the system yeah. that government will use to demonstrate freedom or that we're in control of the situation. Yeah. And, and like every producer out there understands what could happen, um, I'm sure, otherwise he's had his head in the dirt for a long time. Um, but if we ever have a major disease incursion, this will be the system that we will yep. use. Yep. And the accuracy and the usability of the system is critical. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, really strong and important message, Paul. Yeah, so I just think that we need to focus that everyone is part of, of this, you know, the supply chain. So the tools that Integrity Systems Company are, are working on uh, will be one of the keys when it comes to driving particularly genetic gain back through via LDL, back to the producers. We've got you know, a lot of people out there that never get to see their end product, are so far away from it, they, they think they're doing a wonderful job buying the, the bulls and breeding the cattle or the, or the sheep that, that they believe is best suitable for their country and, and, and their land. Um, and I think if we can get LDL through the entire supply chain, that will improve our genetic gain and therefore the, yeah. the whole bottom line of the industry very, very quickly. So hopefully we can do that. That's great. It's, it's a strong message. Mm -hmm. Michelle, your thoughts? Yes, so I'm going to summarise it really quickly. So I think it's just all about transparency and that's along the entire value chain, really. So feedback going to our customers and then back to producers mm -hmm. as well. So transparency is really key in this process. And efficiency in that as well, effectiveness. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Thanks, Michelle. Stephen. I'd just like to encourage producers to, to embrace the change, embrace the technology. It will help us to be able to, uh, with market access and to ensure that that our product is well received all over the world and, and that's really important mm. to be able to drive dollars. So. Absolutely. Joe, I think just to recognise that we do have world class systems in place here today, um, we want to look at ways in which we can address some of the challenges that we have with those systems but ultimately get to a point where the 200,000 participants within our industry see the same value that everyone up here on stage does, um, that they're actually extracting real value for their business and for the industry as a whole out of what our integrity systems can yeah. deliver. Very good. And Jane? Use this one? Yep. Yes, you're good. <laughs> so I, I guess from our perspective um, in integrity systems company, the, the important message um, is 
is to know that that we are keeping the current systems um, really, you know, strengthening them all the time. So we do talk about technology, we do talk about data. There's there's tremendous exciting opportunity with all of that. But you know, we're we're pursuing all of that, but not taking our focus off the main game of the current systems that are in place and yep. making sure that they're being strengthened, exactly. um, you know, every day. So exciting times. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. <laughs>